I particularly want to turn to, of course, the experience in Western Sydney. And this is, of course, where uh, this problem with asbestos first got raised. We've seen in the rush uh, election, uh, pre-election broadband rollout, we have seen a potentially risky situation emerge uh, in the seat of Lindsay. And I am surprised that the member uh, for Lindsay hasn't chosen to spoke, speak on this matter of public importance today, given that in his electorate today we have his residents in the Penrith City Star raising the concerns of asbestos in their front yard and asbestos in their houses. It might have been prudent of him to come in here and speak on this matter of public importance today, given it started in his electorate. The matter was raised, as we saw, uh, by uh, many of his constituents uh, where, who found and had to bring it up themselves that uh, asbestos had been leaked into their front yards where their children play. Uh, and of course, we've seen many concerns raised by the Penrith City Council, uh, by the local Liberal representative there, uh, Fiona Scott, who is our Liberal candidate, having to take on the member for Li uh, Lindsay in relation to this uh, because uh, he, of course, won't answer the questions as the government won't answer the questions in relation to the MBN rollout. The questions are real. When you see uh, Mr O'Farrell from Lindsay raise the concern that his wife and two-year-old daughters aged six to nine weeks have been moved to a nearby hotel in Penrith while authorities decide what to do about the asbestos field pits, everybody in this chamber ought to be concerned. Um, it isn't conflated, as the member for Throsby said, to raise that people in ha ordinary situations in Lindsay now are finding themselves with pits in their streets with asbestos signs around them. Why is that the case? Is that an accident? Uh, is that something that's just occurred out of nothing? Well, of course it isn't. Uh, and this unseemly haste that we've seen in major infrastructure projects, because they are politically driven. Let's not run away from that. The Pink Bats program was politically driven. It was politically driven to attempt you know, as some sort of conflated economic policy to change uh, the global financial crisis, to say, well, if we can stimulate the insulation industry, we can change the climate and we can produce better economic results. This is just nonsense. And what we saw there in that mad rush uh, to rush pink bats into people's roofs was the industry collapse. Uh, we saw many good providers collapse. We saw the unreliable providers receive money. Uh, and benefit, and we saw, sadly, many people's houses die, uh, burn and people lose their lives uh, from a mad political rush. And now here we are again, before an election, Mr Deputy Speaker, uh, in a mad rush to meet unreasonable targets. The government's own targets for the rollout of the NBN have been revised downwards three times, in, uh, showing to everybody in this nation that the original targets were unreasonable, could never have been met trying to provide fibre to every single premise in this country on the timetable the government said was untenable by any of the experts' uh, predictions, any of the experts in this field. It was never going to be possible and it was never going to be affordable, which is why our own costings show that not only will this cost $40 billion, the biggest expenditure, at $40 billion, this could cost up to $90 billion to run this into everybody's houses. And that's because most of the cost comes from the final end production, what we're seeing now, the issue with the pits, the issue with the infrastructure. And if you rush it, and if you don't do a cost-benefit analysis, and if you, don't, if you do politically driven infrastructure rather than proper funded infrastructure and properly planned infrastructure, you get a bad outcome. And that's why, of course, we shouldn't have had government driving this. The reality is in most of our metropolitan cities, people get the internet speeds they need and they get good telecommunications provision in our country. It's the third most profitable sector in the country, telecommunications. It's got a well-established foundation in this country. And you could argue for government to get involved to provide a better broadband service to those areas that can't afford it or that can't receive it because of the nature of our geography, but that's not what the government is doing. That's not what the member for Lyon is supporting them to do. The rollout just happens to be in Western Sydney. Uh, you can draw a map of key Liberal electorates like my electorate, and there is no NBN rollout in my electorate for another four years. But across the road in Greenway, 1 per cent seat, there's rolling out right straight away. You can go to Liberal electorates across this country and you'll find no NBN rollout for years to come. And yet if you go to a marginal seat, you can bet your bottom dollar. You can bet your bottom dollar, Mr Deputy Speaker, there'll be an NBN rollout going through it right now. And so who is to blame in Lindsay when you've got an unseemly roll out there and you've got this situation? Well, these questions are very pertinent, Mr Deputy Speaker, and they ought to be asked of this government because it is not the expertise of this government to run a telecommunications company. And I note the member for Throsby said, you know, well, we helped 
Bernie Banton in his situation, and he happened to be one of my constituents when I came to this place, and his untimely demise was very unfortunate. And the efforts of unions in fighting for his case are where unions are at their best. It's where they do the right thing for those kind of workers who have been in this situation against a company and received justice. But that does not qualify the member for Throsby to then go on and talk about his expertise in the telecommunications field. Standing up for an injured worker in a compensation claim against a company does not give him any special knowledge of how the telecommunications sector works. The two don't translate. His argument is false. He knows as little about telecommunications as I do, and yet he's attempting to tell us how to run a telecommunications company in this country. Can you see why we're going wrong, Mr Deputy Speaker, in this place? There is no doubt that this rollout is being mismanaged by this current government, and they have form in mismanaging major projects. They don't do government well, and we know it. Everybody in this chamber knows it. Not only is government being badly done, but this infrastructure rollout is being mismanaged. It's being mismanaged because of unrealistic expectations, because of no proper planning or cost-benefit analysis. It's being mismanaged because of a political drive from the government to achieve political objectives, not telecommunications objectives, not objectives for ordinary Australians, but to meet an unrealistic set of political objectives of the government. And so when they say don't politicise this, well, when I look at the map of Western Sydney, I look at Liberal seats and marginal seats, and I see the NBN rolling out in those marginal seats, who has politicised this debate? Government. Who has already sought to put it where they need it the most, rather than look at the real telecommunications need of this country? This is, there is a better way to do government, Mr Deputy Speaker, and that is to have an adult government, to have a measured government, a government which does a cost-benefit analysis for the biggest infrastructure project in Australian history. A government which has telecommunications, former telecommunications executives in its ranks and people of stature, like the shadow minister for telecommunications and the member for Bradfield, people who understand that government can't solve all our problems all at once, but can fix those areas of need uh, which need it the most. And that's the policy of the coalition: uh, to rein in NBN Co to something that can be managed, can be delivered, that is affordable, and that is reasonable. Being no further speakers on this MPI, the member for Lyon, the member for Swan. Speaker, I rise to uh, talk on the, uh, the M today's MPI, the threat posed by the government's mismanagement of the national broadband network rollout. And there's been uh, quite a passionate uh, few speeches here tonight, and I've heard uh, independent or supposed independent members raising their voices, and the member for Mitchell just talking about. Uh, his issues, and uh, also the member for Fraser saying that some people shouldn't talk on this. But the reason I'm talking on this, Mr. Deputy Speaker, is the fact that in my electorate of Swan, uh, where there is uh, a very is a marginal seat, where the government decided to roll out in, uh, at the 2010 election a promise that uh, they'd roll out the NBN and start in June 2011, and didn't get round to starting until about October 2012. Again, I agree with the member for Mitchell that it was a political move. But, Mr Deputy Speaker, I rise to speak on the matter which is the threat, as I said, posed by the government, mismanagement of the National Broadband Network. With the problems we've heard from the member for Wentworth, it's clear that once again the government is demonstrating it cannot handle major projects. The government's NBN has been a disaster from day one. Three years ago, at the start of this parliament, they promised 1.3 million premises would be passed by the end of this month. Mr Deputy Speaker, they will struggle to pass 200,000 premises instead. As we heard from the member for Mitchell, it has been downgraded three times. Labor has some serious incompetence when it comes to managing major projects. What makes the matter worse is the government refusing to take any responsibility for the problem. Yesterday we saw Telstra do what Labor's communication minister and the Prime Minister will not do, and that is take responsibility. This is something the government has not done well when we all know it is their incompetent management and policy settings that have created a situation that is utterly unacceptable when it comes to the management of asbestos. Telstra are taking responsibility for getting things right from their end. This government needs to take responsibility for policy settings. They need to acknowledge the contractors for the NBN are dealing with the asbestos on a daily basis, that there has been mishandling of the asbestos and their practices have failed. Mr Deputy Speaker, this government knew there was a problem with the NBN as early as 2009. To be frank, ever since these types of projects have been envisaged, everybody has known Telstra's pits carried risks with asbestos. It should have been understood that the NBN construction involved 
remediating ducts where asbestos is present. The government's NBN contractors should have planned for this and have been aware of their responsibilities and obligations. What the government needed to do is make sure they had the policies in place to handle it properly from day one. Mm -hmm. The government didn't do their homework, Deputy Speaker, and they have let the Australian people down again. History has always been kind to uh, people who t observe it. I understand that uh, when you look at the uh, cast iron pipes that were originally laid down for the gas and fuel in Victoria to run um, town gas through to all the residences around Melbourne, they were originally then it was replaced with natural gas. And in that in that particular period of time, Mr. Deputy Speaker, they found out that uh, the town gas actually dried out the joints. The uh, joints that were on the cast iron pipes and actually created leaks. So they had to work out that eventually that there was going to be uh, a replacement of those pipes. So they went to PVC. A simple lesson telling anyone who's going to do a major infrastructure project, there are lessons to be learnt from previous situations like that. And putting new fibre through, particularly through uh, old pits, is an obvious one, very obvious. Um, Mr Deputy Speaker, Telstra announced an audit of its contractors Yet there has been no such move by NBN Co. Both Telstra and NBN Co are responsible for the contractors' work in asbestos line pits and ducts. NBN is co responsible for enlarging ducts where there is insufficient room for the fibre. Mr Deputy Speaker, the issue first came to my attention in February when I was contacted by a resident in Teague Street, Victoria Park, in my electorate. Cynthia at the time were involved in the rollout of the fibre, not Telstra, Cynthia, a subcontractor to the government. The constituent reported a serious risk of asbestos spores being liberated into the air after an old Telstra pit, an old Telstra hub, was hit with a mash hammer to break it down by a worker wearing latex gloves and a P95 mask. I was told the worker picked up bits of asbestos from the sand and put them in a bag, while a Cynthia worker without a mask worked close by. Mr Deputy Speaker, actually have a photo of that and would take the, seek leave to actually uh, table that where there's a worker without a mask working close by. So Cynthia cannot say that they've got their processes and procedures in correct order for dealing with asbestos. Mr Deputy Speaker, the highest priority for NBN Co here must be for the safety of these workers and the communities where this, is, this work is taking place. We can have all the rhetoric about who's right and who's wrong, but at the end of the day, Major, project, major infrastructure projects must protect the works and protect the people in the communities who could be affected by such things as asbestos spores. Mr Deputy Speaker, I reported this incident at the time to WorkSafe and then Comcare on the 19th and 20th of February. I am yet to receive a response from Comcare, another uh, government uh, department, and I find it unbelievable for the issue that they say is, is not relevant or is not really an issue. Uh, that they have taken so long to, not, to respond to an issue that was uh, deeply concerning within the electorate of Swan. I did actually receive a written response from Cynthia, but uh, we'll go into that later. We heard through the uh, member for Wentworth, he talked about this as being the most mismanaged uh, infrastructure project ever in Australia. And as we also heard from other speakers, there was no cost effective analysis done when we went to the election with the, with the promise of uh, rolling out the NBN. Uh, as I said before, if they had done a cost-benefit analysis, maybe they would have taken into consideration the fact that these pits needed to be upgraded, as would have been done if they had done a cost-benefit analysis when they did pink bats as well. It's been mentioned by a few of the coalition speakers, the pink bats uh, debacle, and again, this is just a gentle reminder that this government is out of control and cannot handle major infrastructure projects. Mr Deputy Speaker, one of the things I mentioned just before was about dealing with the communities and the people who actually are affected or potentially affected by the asbestos. And uh, because of what happened in Teague Street in Victoria Park in my electorate, I ran a survey through that particular street to find out what sort of um, re reaction there was to the, to the NBN experience for those people in their electorate. And I'd like to uh, read those out to you or some of them out to you, Mr Deputy Speaker. An email from uh, one one uh, street holder there, he said, uh, we had a street meeting at the weekend and discussed issues relating to the damage caused by the NBN Co Cynthia. A high percentage of residents on the even numbered side of T Street from number 72 onwards had lodged complaints with the NBN regarding the damage caused to their properties and damage to the nature strip and items such as reticulation. The response from NBN anecdotally has been abysmal. There seems to be a lot of platitudes 
but no action. Sounds familiar. We wonder if the NBN contractors think the residents will just go away. Two residents came home for their property and the NBN contractors had entered the grounds and used their watering hoses to water down machinery used for digging up the path, breaking the hose fittings and leaving the water running. The neighbourhood is looking disgraceful and we wonder who an authority is going to champion on behalf of the residents the restitution of the streets back to how they looked prior to the NBN arrival. I've attached some images taken at the damage, concrete splatter on walls and general mess left by the NBN contractors. We had a flyer delivered recently to offer connection via Telstra to the NBN in the Centro Shopping Centre, which is a large advertisement for residents to connect to the NBN in this suburb. If asked residents to check availability for your area, and we did, but surprisingly there was no connection in the 6100 postcode, which is where we live. We are aware that there is no one able to connect to the NBN in this suburb and there is no availability for the foreseeable future. What is the point of sending out this flyer? Is this simply NBN propaganda? We are keeping you updated as it seems nothing is tangibly happening at the street level. Mr Deputy Speaker, in a response to one of my surveys, Mr John and Glyn Vivian, Mr and Mrs Vivian wrote back to me and their comment on their experience initially was negative and then they also said that in 2012, contractors dug up our footpath and rode to lay cable to Ursula Frayne High School. Contractors were rude, lazy and totally unskilled. Damage was sustained to our water meter when contractors stepped over the fence through the hedge to, to prepare and lay new footpath. A leak was developed within a short period of time, approximately seven days, and then to be repaired at our expense, spoke to the supervisor who would not take any responsibility. And to finish off, his wife also wrote, Please note that my husband had cause to speak to the supervisor on several occasions regarding the quality of the workmanship that was used to replace the footpath that had been dug up. When he drew the water leak to his attention, the claim was dismissed, our claim was be as being irrelevant and not possible. It's a shame that he, the supervisor, was not around to see the workmen climbing through our fence and stomping through our front yard with their picks and shovels. They then received a uh, bill from Cynthia, from, the, uh, or from Charter Plumbing and Gas, to fix their uh, plumbing for $370, which NBN and Cynthia refused to do. Again, Mr Deputy Speaker, this is another debacle of an infrastructure project by the government, and we must remember that it's about the communities and the workers who must be kept safe. Order. The member's time has expired. Being no further speakers on this discussion, this discussion has now concluded. The member